Honestly, what do they all take me for? I'm fine. Perfectly and completely fine. It's hardly different from daytime. I'm not scared. Professor? Is that you? Oh, well, <laughs> good evening! <laughs> oh, I left something in the dining hall, so I'm on my way to fetch it. But you don't need to come with me or anything like that. I'm fine on my own, really. You weren't? Oh, Apologies for making an assumption. The truth is, everyone I come across asks if I'd like some company. They all seem to think I'll be scared wandering alone at night. So rude and presumptuous, you know. I'm perfectly capable of being on my own. Hey, Professor, wait! I, um, well... I thought it might be nice to walk and talk together to the dining hall, shall we? To be abundantly clear, this has nothing to do with my non-existent fear of ghosts. Oh, you must be bored. Fantastic, then. Do you mind, um, filling the void with some chatter? Some find silence to be a bit unsettling, after all. Okay, I confess, I am scared of ghosts. The monastery is unnerving to me at night. So, can we talk about something, please? Anything. I've noticed for quite some time now, you treat all your students equally, don't you? You've never treated me differently simply because I'm younger than the others. And I've always appreciated that. Isn't it rather obvious? I'm roughly two to three years younger than the rest of the class. Have you just not been paying close enough attention to those you teach? That's poor form for a professor. Oh, there! I found what I was looking for. Well, I'd better be on my way now. Good night! Professor, thank you for helping me with my training. I'd love to do this again, if possible. Your advice is always so useful. Everyone thinks you're a wonderful teacher. You account for people's weaknesses while capitalizing on their strengths. Initially, I wasn't sure you paid too much attention to your students. Clearly, I was wrong. After all, were that the case, you wouldn't be capable of providing such useful feedback. I'll continue to learn and grow from your instruction, Professor. I just know it. You think I'm determined? <laughs> Professor, I... Thank you. You're the only one who's ever praised me like that. I mean, people are always telling me I've got a knack for magic. If you can call the power of my crest a knack, they aren't wrong per se. Though bearing two crests isn't a gift I ever asked for. Anyhow, I've made a point to work harder than most, and not rely too heavily on the power they bestow. So I find it frustrating that the only praise I seem to receive is directly related to that power. If you've noticed how hard I work, then well, it just... It makes me very happy. Well... You see... I... It is because... I am the only child of House Ordelia. I must do all I can for my family name. I'm determined to someday be of real value to them. And that day must come soon. I can't waste any time. I don't have much of it left. Anyway, I should be going. Thank you again for your help. Thank you for helping me with my training again today, Professor. I'm gonna keep at it for a while longer, so you go on ahead. I can't. Not when I'm right on the cusp of using my power to greater potential. 
Surely you yourself are tired. Just don't worry about me, okay? I'm sorry, Professor. It was careless of me to continue, despite how fatigued I clearly was. I probably should have listened to you. Now I've made a mess of things. I can't help but feel the need to rush in all things constantly. You get that way when you realize you haven't got much time. I believe I've mentioned that House Ordelia was, at one time, being controlled by people from the Empire. During that time, strange people, mages perhaps, came and performed rituals on all the youth within my family. With the Empire monitoring our every move, my parents could do nothing but watch in horror as all of this unfolded. One after another, the children died, till the only one left was me. You know, my hair wasn't always this color. During their experiments, they'd been doing things with my blood. One morning, I awoke like this. A shock of white hair, all trace of pigment, gone. Upon seeing me, the mages were delighted. They realized that their experiments had finally succeeded. Sure enough, they ran a test and saw that two crests coexisted within me. Losing pigment from my hair wasn't the only loss. The mages informed me that my lifespan was now greatly shortened. Five more years at most. Perhaps less. Shortly thereafter, the mages lost interest in me, and we never saw them in the Ordelia household again. Since all that, our family has been in decline. It's challenging now even to govern our territory. After all my mother and father have suffered, I at least want them to have peace as they grow older. That is all I wish for, but I haven't much time to ensure it comes to pass. It's not like what's been done to me can be undone. Professor. The only way I can conceive of would be to remove my crest somehow. But I don't know if that's even remotely possible. Even if it were, I wouldn't be of much use to you and the others without my crest. You sound resolved. I'll allow your resolve to bolster my own. Thank you, Professor. Professor, I... We have. I can feel that the crests are no longer a part of me. That must mean I'll... I mean, my body will... Thank you, Professor. No matter the outcome, I feel a sense of peace. I have hope, and that hope will carry me through it all. You've done so much, searching for a way to remove my crest, to save me. I can't tell you how much it means to me. I will not claim my title. House Ordelia will end with my father's generation. After this, I'm going to begin preparations for our family's dissolution. This will ensure that the people of our territory will not be troubled, and my parents will be able to live out their lives in peace. A good question. I hadn't considered it, but assuming I have life left in me, would it be all right if I came back here to stay by your side? Without my crests, I'm not sure what all I'd be able to do for you. But you have given me a new life. I want to use my time to support you however I can. I just... Oh, is this... This is...
What I said earlier about not caring what the outcome of all this is, I take it back. For the longest time, I didn't think I'd be around to be a part of the future you and everyone were creating, that I had no place in it. But now, I cannot fight it any longer. I do care, and I do not wish to give up on chasing that future. I do not wish to die. I refuse to give up on myself or on our future. And so, I promise to come back to you, no matter what. Once I'm back... Yes, I quite like the sound of that. Together, it is decided. We will be together forever, living long, full lives. Count on it, my love. <laughs>